Hello, welcome back to my channel, Family Tech, where you get all the tech tips, news, and information that you didn't even know you needed. So a lot of people ask about my favorite parental control tools, and I do have some favorites. I've talked about them in several other videos. Bark has decided to sponsor this video, so thank you to Bark for sponsoring this video. Even though it is sponsored, all of the opinions and use cases and everything are my own. I will tell you exactly how I use it in my family, show you some examples, and hopefully you can get a little bit of an idea of how to use Bark for your own family. So let's dig right into what is Bark. So Bark is a parental control tool. I use it mostly for monitoring. Why I like using Bark for monitoring is that it's able to give me a window into several different applications that a lot of the other parental control tools cannot. So I really like Bark for this reason. Um, it is fairly inexpensive. It's about $14 a month or $100 for the entire year. Now you get unlimited devices and unlimited um, users basically. So what I mainly use Bark for is to monitor the device. There is a difference between monitoring and management. Management will allow you to set different time limits, uh, manage what apps are installed and allowed and things like that. Monitoring helps you understand what content is happening on that device. So whether it's messages that your children are sending or videos that they are watching, things like that, you can be notified for anything with monitoring and with management, it's more of setting up time limits and setting up limits on the device. So there's two different portions and Bark has both portions. What I really like about Bark is it still gives your child a little bit of privacy because it's really Really only going to notify you if something concerning is found and so when something concerning is found it's going to give you a little snippet and I will show you exactly kind of how that looks in just a minute but it's just gonna give you a little snippet of the conversation so you can dig a little deeper talk to your child about what it was about and things like that so it's really just helping you have these conversations with your children I do want to mention that there's a limitation for Apple devices Apple's operating system, and I've mentioned this in several, several videos, is so locked down that third-party apps can only access specific areas of the phone. And so what Bark has done to help overcome this limitation is that it does its analysis of the uh, monitoring on a backup of the device. So when your child is on an iPhone, you have to install Bark on a computer. And then the, when the phone backs up to that computer over your Wi-Fi signal, then it will monitor those messages. So it's not going to be necessarily in real time, but as soon as that backup happens, Bark will monitor those messages and then be able to send you those notifications. Now in Android, you install the app on their phone directly. And so those net notifications do happen in real time. So because of this limitation, it's also limited in what it can monitor. I'm going to link in the description, the page on Bark that shows you exactly what it can and cannot monitor. Now that I've kind of explained exactly what it is, what it can do, let's go through the application itself. So when you start up the application, you will see this dashboard screen. You can see it's got a lot of data and information about the device and about your child's online activities. And it will show exactly kind of who they are contacting the most and what apps they are using the most. And it will show you exactly what kind of content it's been monitoring and how much it's been monitoring and basically how much time it saved you from not having to monitor all of these messages. Then you can go over to the settings and this is where you can set up those time limits and make sure any apps that you want blocked are blocked. You can set all that up here. You can also set up the different categories that you want to be notified about. And like I said, some of these categories will give you different types of sensitivity. Others will be on or off as you can see here. So set up any of the categories that are concerning to you or turn them all on, turn all of them off except for one of the categories. You know, it's really up to you and what kind of content you are concerned about your child coming across. 
This is where you can see all of the different alerts. So we can open up this alert. It said it was uh, profanity. So it'll give you the small snippet of what it found as profanity. Here you can see it was LMAO. That is what was considered profanity. Um, so I'm not gonna talk to my daughter about that because that one is totally fine for us to use, but it's very dependent on what is okay in your home. Um, so you can see all the different kinds of things that it can monitor for and that it will notify you. And like I said, I really like that it just gives you a small snippet, a window of information. It's not going to tell you everything that's happening. So when you're talking to your kids about, you know, privacy and everything like that, first let them know there is no such thing as privacy online. Um, and you are here to help them make sure that anything they do is not going to come back to bite them in the future. You know, talk about different celebrities that get canceled because of something they tweeted 10 years ago. Kids sometimes don't understand what it is that is inappropriate to say, what is inappropriate for them to do. So make sure they understand that you are just a safety net. It's just going to notify you if they've done anything concerning, and then you can address it at that point. I always compare it to seatbelts. It's not that the government doesn't trust us to say seated in the car is why seatbelts are required. They're required for when something happens, for when an emergency happens, an accident happens. So what Bark is for them is just a seatbelt and it's there to help protect them just in case of an emergency. If they keep that seatbelt on and everything is fine and they're obeying the traffic laws and all of these things, then the seatbelt will never have to be used to keep them in their seat. That is kind of my breakdown of Bark and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Again, thank you so much to Bark for sponsoring this video and hope to see you next time.